afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Coffin, uh, HRA Advisories. It is January 17th, 2019. I'm here with Chris Taylor from uh, Great Bear Resources, and we wanted to have a little bit of a conversation. As you may or may not be aware, uh, Great Bear put out a fairly stupendous, I would say, <laughs> drill hole yesterday. Uh, and they held a, a very interesting webinar today. I mean, I was happy to see that webinar because something I've been telling subscribers for two or three months now is to, is to stop obsessing about every drill hole and, and focus on the big picture. But, you know, as well, now that I've said that, do you want to obsess on the drill hole for a minute? <laughs> it, yeah. it was quite a drill hole. We were, we were disappointed, Eric. Uh, yeah, you know, sure. we, we <laughs> thought maybe we'd get two kilograms per ton gold, but mm -hmm. we only got 1.6. Yeah, so, uh, you know. Sucks to be you. I, I will tell you a, a very quick story. When Bob called me uh, just before we put the results out and, li and listed the assay intervals to me, he said, you know, X over, he's like, you know, it's, it's 5 over 10, and then it's, uh, you know, we had another uh, it was 50 over over uh, you know just under a meter I was like oh Bob you know well good job you know and then he said Chris that's ounces not right. grams <laughs> <laughs> I was like Bob you are an a-hole yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's, but he got me pretty good um, it's phenomenal well, phenomenal that's again this is the hinge zone I mean this is you had you know I would say the you know the holes that kind of I guess really lit up the stock if you want to put it that way uh, last fall that really really got things going mm -hmm. where all they were from they were from the zone as well where where does this whole sort of fit into the picture um, in terms of where it is in the zone compared to those zones? it's a uh, further down than okay. the initial big uh, hinge zone hit so it's deeper quite a bit deeper uh, and it's off to the side a little bit so we're okay. still figuring out uh, the geometry of uh, these steeply plunging high grade zones and yeah I mean the alert that I sent out yesterday was you know tongue-in-cheek called a great bear takes the plunge, but do you know? That's actually like have just you as good as plunge? Bob's joke. <laughs> <laughs> have, have, have you drilled up? Have you drilled up plunge of this intercept? Like, are there holes no. there? No. no. Okay. There's nothing. So you just you don't know yet whether that's that's the better part of it or that's something separate or. It's, uh, I mean, ultimately, we tried to show in the I web. Mean, these things move around a lot too, anyway, right? They're not uh, that regular. They seem to be. The plunges look to be really predictable. What okay. I think we have is lots of them. Uh, okay. So we showed on the webinar today uh, that if you just look in the immediate hinge zone area and the okay. 300 or so meters that we've drilled so far, we're targeting six different hinge zones, basically. Okay. Uh, so we have high grade intercepts in uh, five, five or six different areas, and we anticipate the same plunge will affect everything in that area. Okay. So that means follow up drilling. I mean, the hinge zone is really just one of these steeply plunging high grade right. zones within the vein network uh, that we call the south limb zone. Okay. Yeah. And presumably, I mean, you, now that you've got a fairly predictable, I mean, I know you don't want to, uh, <laughs> you, you don't want to stick your neck out too far, but one of the, hopefully one of the big benefits of having a fairly predictable plunge is when it comes to the higher grade stuff, your hit ratio probably goes up going forward, or at least that's that's the hope now. I mean, our hit ratio has been phenomenal. So, yeah. uh, you know, that first random, or I say random, it wasn't random, but to do uh, the first uh, three drill fences across the south limb, uh, we hit a gold bearing, visible gold bearing quartz veins in, um, it was eight out of 19 holes. Right. It's phenomenal. And we hit gold in uh, all of the holes now, which is, which is really that is a very good hit rate. So what we're finding, the, the results that we put out just now with the uh, 1,600 gram per ton gold in them, we hit the zone within 14 meters of where it was predicted to be based on our mm -hmm. model. We basically hit it bang on. Mm -hmm. So it, I can't predict and Bob can't predict yeah. and nobody can predict the grade of mm -hmm. any individual intercept, but it varies from grams to you know, uh, 50, 50 ounces now. Mm -hmm. So uh, it does, it's, it's very predictable geometrically, it seems, okay. uh, but uh, perhaps the, the grade, you know, it varies from very good to whatever you just described. Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, the other thing that you went into in the webinar today that I think was, is really, really important for people to get their head around, um, you had some direct comparisons between the Dixie project and, and the Red Lake mine, the yep. Goldcorp mine. Um, and you were laying out there, you know, basically scale on scale in terms of how big your system is and how much you still got to test compared to the Gold Corp mine itself. Mm -hmm. um, on a scale basis, arguably you got more target than, than they had. 
Uh, like a fair amount more, actually. Yeah, I, I'm really pleased to hear you say that. And we, it, it, it's one of these things where you you don't want to over promote your yeah. company, right? But to give you a feeling for how excited we are about the project, I mean, the the D2 fold axis trend that we're drilling right now that has all these zones, the Dixie Limb, the Hinge, the South Limb around it, there's other D2 fold axes that run through our property. Right. And each one of those has many kilometers of strike extent. So if you think about the aggregate- Most of them have very little historic work. I mean, all, almost like the D2 wasn't really very well recognized no. before, really. Yeah, they saw the fold, but they didn't target the right areas, right? right. So um, it's more, if it's related more to the plumbing that right. that develops around the hinges of these things or the axes of these things, you should be looking in different areas of the project. And we have, at one point today, Bob illustrated it for everybody to right. see on the webinar. If you follow those trends along strike, the various contacts of the different geological units, uh, some of the ultramafic units, some of the different basalts, they're all highly prospective and they're not drilled at all. Right. So, and there's more of these D2 trends. So, um, you know, Going forward through this year, you know, as you know, we're sufficiently funded uh, for lots and lots of drilling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but what we'll see is a combination of that definition type drilling in the areas we know about and step outs into new targets too. And right now, I mean, by certainly by Red Lake standards, you guys are drilling fairly shallow holes, a couple hundred meters, three hundred meters maybe. Yeah. Um, you're in the midst as as subscribers, and of course your shareholders know of a thirty thousand meter drill program fairly mm -hmm. early in it still. Mm -hmm. I know, I know with the funds you have on hand, I know you've got very good drill costs, so, I mean, theoretically, you could go to 40, 50, 60, 70 and not really have to worry about it too much. I guess the number would probably be, uh, we'd have with cash on hand right now, probably enough to do about 80,000 meters of drilling. And right. then we have another $8 million of in the money warrants. Right. Uh, so those are priced from 20 to a dollar, 20 cents to a dollar 75. Uh, and that would, uh, you know, if you factor that in as well, I mean, you'd be well over 100,000, 120,000 meters of drilling that we can do with current funding. So, you know, it's really important that, it's, it's really important you recognize this. I mean, one of the you know, one of the biggest advantage um, Great Bear has, and I've, as Chris can tell you, I wasn't that easy to sell. And the reason I wasn't was I was waiting for the combination of, you know, results plus financeability. Because if anybody who knows Red Lake knows, you've got to drill and drill and drill and drill. That's, mm -hmm. that's just how it is with these systems. Mm -hmm. They can be incredibly rich. Um, they've been great producers and incredibly profitable mines, mm -hmm. but there's no shortcut. You've got to drill tens mm -hmm. of thousands of meters, mm -hmm. and you're in this incredibly favorable position right now mm -hmm. where you're, you know, your dilution to drill ratio is extremely good. Yes. You can <laughs> undertake very small amounts of dilution and drill tens of thousands of meters, and for mm -hmm. me, that's the whole ballgame here. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, it took a lot of time to get that lined up ahead of time, but having a sub $200 a meter all-in drill cost is certainly very useful as oh, well. Yeah. That's because it's right off the highway just outside of town. I mean, I just, you know, I just want to get across to people, this is a, a very impressive story. I mean, as I just said, the whole, the whole drilling to dilution, the leverage, uh, Great Bear is able to just keep drilling and drilling and drilling. And when you look at the scale of the Dixie system, it's essentially the same size as the as the Red Lake mine, the Goldcorp mine. Uh, you know, that's the kind of comparison that a lot of companies would do here, there, and everywhere, and everybody would roll their eyes, um, usually with good reason. But you know, keep in mind that we're dealing with essentially the same geological, lithological, structural setting, and more importantly, obviously, these guys have been hitting high grade gold where they should be hitting high grade gold if you've got the Red Lake model. Um, you know, the Goldcorp mines produced over 20 million ounces. This is the kind of target scale we're looking at. It would take a billion meters of drilling to get to that, but I don't, I don't think anybody on, in the shareholder base or in management really cares about that because I suspect long, long, long before that, it's not going to be a Great Bear project. It's going to be somebody else's. So uh, you know, take a look at the story, GBR Vancouver. Uh, great story. It's clearly going to be one of this year's big successes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.